Lovett has been a paid programmer. He's worked with many different languages, and his talk today will be Bang the Gong, the Game is On, What Python People Can Learn from Ruby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. And that is Ruby. So, I'm Peter Lovett. I've been a pro paid programmer since 82, running training courses since 1985, running Python training courses since 2007. I love Python and my wife and kids, God and Bacon. Um, don't tell my wife about the order there. <laughs> I'm not sure if I got the order right. And um, professionally, I work as a consultant and as a programmer, but I also do quite a bit of training and I run training courses in C, C++, Perl, Python, Java, Java, Ruby, SQL, XML, etc. And if you're interested in that, uh, see me afterwards. This talk is not a Python versus Ruby talk. That would be unfair and I'm not keen on starting a religious war. This talk is not a training course in Ruby. I can't cover a huge amount in the time we've got together. This is not a full coverage of the Ruby programming language. Um, and it's also not how should Python the language change. This is about how this course is about um, learning another language and in doing that, hopefully, you'll get a better appreciation of what Python is like, uh, certain issues that Python has, and how Ruby solves them, and then maybe how, how you as a Python programmer can solve those issues. I can remember uh, the value of being multilingual. Many years ago, I learned uh, Koine Greek, and I learned far more about English <laughs> when I learned Greek um, than I did about Greek, actually. It's... Uh, so... Um, I am going to be going fast, so buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. Kansas is going bye-bye. So what is Ruby? It's a programming language very closely... It looks very similar, as we will see, to Python. Uh, the author is uh, a Japanese computer scientist um, known in the English circles as Mats. Um, it's quite an interesting language. Um, it was released in 96, so a little bit uh, newer than Python. And he talks about uh, it being inspired by Python and some of the deficiencies of Python when he made it. Having said that, um, it's much more like Perl. So its philosophy is much more like Perl. It's got a lot of uh, Perl syntax. It's got a bit of Python syntax, but it's actually much more like Perl. So who are my Perl friends? Oh, only a few of you. Oh, <laughs> who's ever seen Perl? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, so those were the ones that uh, actually like Perl, those three, and the rest of you are the ones that used to work in Perl before you got Python. I understand. Um, Rails you most, is very closely aligned with Ruby. So Rails is the web framework, and that's what we call the, the Ruby killer app by David Heinemeyer Hansen. So, uh, you might be curious. Oh, so use Ruby, be happy. Just uh, out of curiosity, uh, the other day I did a uh, search for Ruby jobs and Python jobs. So we got 441 on Seek for Python and 358 for Ruby. So it's not, um, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's jobs there, that's probably what I should say. Interesting. The philosophy of Ruby is Tim Towdy. Anyone come across Tim Towdy? Okay, all the Perl people. There's more than one way to do it, which is the Perl philosophy, versus the Python, there should be one, and preferably only one obvious way to do it. So in Python, you've got really only one way to loop, while, one way to iterate with four, and uh, Perl gives you 15 ways to loop, and, Py and uh, Ruby gives you about 13. Although, in Python, that one way may not be obvious at first, unless you're Dutch. So what does Ruby got? Ruby has got more racing cars. <laughs> so Rails is authored by David Heinemeyer Hansen, whose second job is as a Formula One racing car driver. So, and also, he's got a bit of money. He uh, got the Zonder HH commissioned, and um, that's HH not for Hugh Hefner, but for Heinemeyer Hansen, the author of Ruby. He actually came first in his class in Le Mans this year. So. Python needs more racing cars. What else does Python uh, need? Ruby has a national park. <laughs> so there is an awesome national park, probably one of my favourites, um, pretty close to bang in the centre of Australia, uh, Ruby Gap. 
the, uh, actually the site of the first gemstone rush in Australia, well before the gold rush. Um, so one of my favourite places in Australia, we've got bog just near there. So Python needs more racing cars, a national park, more grace. Both the author of Pearl, Larry Wall, and the author of uh, Ruby, Matts, are uh, both uh, men of significant um, faith that uh, uh, are f implementing their, their faith in, uh, with graceful ways in the world. That's good. We've got Monty Python, but they've got bacon. So everything in Ruby is about bacon, and so Python needs more bacon, and we need more gemstones. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this is not a Ruby training course, but I want to give you some of the basic syntax. So first up, we don't have colons. Woo! OK? <laughs> you don't have to do an indent. OK? Um, you do need an end. OK. Well, that's, uh, that's OK, so the syntax is different. Um, like Perl, the parentheses are not needed. So you... <laughs> So in, <laughs> look, I didn't say this is going to be good. <laughs> I said, so uh, you can have parentheses or not. Take your pick. Uh, the semicolon is available like Perl, or you can use the Python style end of line for, uh, so you can kind of write this like Perl, or you can write it like Python. Oh, you can. But you will need the parens or not with round print. Oh, don't get me started. And uh, you can use quotes, single quotes, double quotes. It also supports the back tick, which uh, executes shell commands. Nice bit of danger with that one. And single and double are actually slightly different, as we'll see. Some more basic syntax. Naming conventions. Unlike um, Python, <laughs> Ruby is very consistent in the naming conventions that they use internally, much more like Java. Gets things uh, very, uh, very uh, consistent, although Python 3 is certainly um, heading better, in more in that direction. For my, um, <laughs> my Pearl friends, there you go, sigils. Woo! I'm not getting much applause here. <laughs> Dollar zero, anyone? Any guesses? Program name, sysarg v zero. Oh, of course. Dollar dollar. PID, yep. Same as, same as shell, really. Dollar colon. And good luck with guessing that one. <laughs> That's your sys path, your load path. Oh, of course. <laughs> I have to say, ooh. Other Ruby syntax. Ruby doesn't have, until 2.0, keyword arguments. And when it got them, they're absolutely dreadful. Nothing, nowhere near as good as Python's. Ruby does have variable interpolation with the hash uh, curlies. But we, we've got the curly colon comma. Whoa, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> it is. That's like the best thing. For that reason alone, I'll use Python. Um, we don't have a plus plus. There's no underscore underscore something or other underscore underscore. Assigning arrays to lists of variables, unpacking is simpler. And regex, like Perl, is much, much simpler. So there's a typical example of a very simple Ruby program. You got your hash bang, print for printing, get s is like raw input, and then calling its to underscore integer function, or method really. Um, instead of doing the int of the result, which looks a bit too functional, this is more object oriented. You've got if, oh yeah, fantastic, let's change l if again. <laughs> And look, to be honest, uh, that's the one bit that just gets me every single time. Is it elif or elzif? Um, we don't have a in Ruby. We don't have that glorious range check that we can in Python. So we have to go and and there's no space printing with print. You need the end. And just as a side note, in teaching rank beginners programming languages, end is great. <laughs> Getting that indent to finish is sometimes a challenge for absolute beginners. Some more very basic syntax. True is lowercase. OK, good. Something else to remember. There's a sweet little bit of for loop. So clearly Ruby's borrowed a lot from Python. Well, maybe it's bash. <laughs> That's our range. And the hash uh, curly is giving us interpolation. But you can actually put code in there as well. i plus 1, giving me a result of 1, 2, 3. Got to have the end. You can also use curly braces if you'd rather. 
Some uh, basic Ruby syntax. One really sweet and interesting thing that comes up in Ruby, you can actually have a question mark or an exclamation mark as the final character in a method. So if that method's returning a yes, no, true, false, ends in a question mark, which actually sort of adds a lot of interest to it. So you've got like um, string.size, which gives you the number of elements, and string.empty, which tells you whether there's anything in there or not. So the question mark, making it very easy for me to remember that that returns a bool. I don't know if this is because of the author's original non-English language, but instead of up, upper and lower, it's upcase and downcase, and it's start with, not starts with, although I can give it a list of possible prefixes, which is nice. Um, I will forgive him, though, because his English is far better than my Japanese. <laughs> Here's a more interesting example using the built-in dir module, uh, the glob function, star star, getting me the directo uh, directories and subdirectories. Slash square bracket A to C, star dot curly R, B, comma, P, Y. Do to build a block. Name is how we get the, um, the uh, well, it's not really as, it's the, um, it's, the, it's the variable of the in when you do a for in file name. So, and then there's this really interesting, very pearlish, this is very pearl, uh, equals tilde to apply a regex. None of this re dot search business. Uh, that's exactly the same as pearl for my pearl friends. And interesting how you can have an if on the end of the statement rather than at the beginning. Again, exactly straight out of Pearl's book. And uh, it turns out that um, sysadmin people like this. This actually produces really quite sweet, easy code to, um, to do. I don't know if it's as readable as Python. But it's quite powerful. That's pretty powerful. That's right, you could use it um, as a, um, but you'd need the else if you had it as a, um, yeah, yeah, else none or, yeah. so Ruby. Ruby, 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 Ruby. That's all the rubies. <laughs> Constance, here we go. What does this print? Anyone? Anyone know Python? <laughs> okay, a few of you. What does this print? Area of a circle, yeah. So the first one it prints would be the first print would print the pi three point one four blah blah blah, and then this would print. <laughs> I was a little disturbed, got to tell you, <laughs> about changing pi. There was apparently some governor in Texas that wanted to change it to four. I'm just not a big fan of doing that. That's just me. Maybe it's just me. In Ruby, um, it actually has a naming convention where things, uh, variables that start with a capital letter are constant. So if I do that in Ruby, then it gives me pi and then a warning. <laughs> <laughs> so thankfully all the Python people go, yay, well at least I can still change a constant. <laughs> Phew, I was getting a bit worried there. No, don't worry, you can still change it, but at least it will give you a warning. What does that tell me as a Python programmer? As a Python programmer, I need to be careful about constants. There, that's all I'll say about that. Scope, what does this print? Five, Five. awesome. <laughs> Good. Maybe some of you should have come to my Python 101 before. <laughs> okay, that's five. And in Ruby, that's how it would look. Again, we've got def, just like Python. Um, you could put parens after it if you wanted. In fact, you can even put a colon on the end if you wanted. And the call doesn't need parens, but put them on if you want. Um, but this is actually quite different. Ruby's scope of mainline variables, uh, that'll give you a name error. What does that tell me? That tells me that Python programmers need to be careful about scope. Maybe I'll give you a harder one. More on scope. What does that print? 6.5, good. What does that print? Unbound, excellent. If you don't know that this gives you an unbound local, you need to learn some more Python. Um, 
that, uh, that could be solved if I wanted that to work, and I don't really know what I'm trying to do there, so I don't really know how to solve it. But one way of solving that in Python is with global, saying from here down within this function, the name i is corresponding to global scope. And that will print out uh, global i, which is 5, 6, and then that will have changed uh, global i. Uh, how does Ruby do it? How does Ruby deal with the issue of scope like this? Ah! <laughs> yep, them sigils. A, a dollar prefix makes that a global variable. Applaud now. <laughs> We're having fun. Are we having fun? Who thinks Python's a great language? <laughs> I haven't won you over yet then. No? Okay, I'll keep going. See how we go. Constants, scope, global scope. Ah, here's one bit which I find quite nice. I'm often teaching beginners Python, and that's a common uh, structure they do, and that gives me what? None. none. And it just gets me every time. They go, why is this print up none? And I say, like, oh. well, it's a mutable type, but it doesn't return a copy because it's all by reference. And, uh, it's a bit of uh, it's a challenge to get right because there's nothing obvious in Python that will tell you this. You actually have to dive into the docs, and half the time the docs won't actually specifically tell you what's going on here. This one, the docs are helpful, but in Ruby, the trailing exclamation mark, the bang, means yep, this mutates the object. So I can look at the method, and by the way, they're actually two completely different methods. There's the sort method that returns a copy of the list. Um, and the uh, the bang, which returns a, a which uh, which actually returns a reference to the to the mutated list, but mutates it in in place where it is. What does that tell me as a Python programmer? I need to be careful about mutating methods methods that mutate the object. I kind of wish that Python had a special return type that would um, go crash me <laughs> if someone tried to assign it. But I said this was not about how I want Python to change. But I do like that. That's a nice indicator. Unfortunately, in Ruby, it's not a mandatory. So a mutating method doesn't have to have a bang trailing. It'd just be a nice idea if it did. And most of the standard library does give you that. So uh, for my Perl friends, you've got chomp, um, which modifies in place, or you've got uh, chomp, which doesn't, which, which, which returns a change. Note that that gets the function, so if you'd like, you could go gets paren paren dot chomp paren paren, but I'm over parend. She's a witch. So what would that print? She's not a witch. She's not a witch. How come? I don't get it. She's got, there's an S in there. That's right, zero. Zero is false. Now, whoops, are you all sitting down? Oh, yeah, you are sitting down. Person up the back, stand up, sit down. Here you go. In Ruby, zero is true. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what? How? Yeah, that's right. Zero is true. So index, which actually returns the same thing, zero based offset of the substring within the mainstring, um, returns zero if it is found at the beginning, but zero is true. And therefore it returns none, well actually the Ruby equivalent of none, which is nil, and nil and false are the only things that are false. So it turns out this is actually really nice. Again, beginners would expect that zero would be a true, unless you've come from C, C++, Perl, Java, <laughs> <laughs> Bash, and well really anything. <laughs> But those that haven't had a programming experience, this actually um, uh, makes sense. So it's actually quite an interesting thing because really zero is an object, even in Python. So how come that object is not true? Um, some other uh, aspects that are interesting to consider. Uh, the object model is very heavily inspired by Python, but um, Matt's m said that he wanted a language that was more object-oriented. I'm going, how can you be more object-oriented than Python? 
Well, there's quite a bit in Python that's either not object-oriented or doesn't look object-oriented. Things like all your built-in functions like ABS and raw input and int and stir and all of those, they're just sort of out there floating. Where did they come from? Um, so global functions, those sorts of things. Ruby wraps all of those up. Uh, in Ruby, everything's an object, which is the same in Python. But in Ruby, quite different to Python, everything's an expression. So you can do embedded assignments and have the result of that being something, which you can then test in a while loop, uh, while test, which a C programmer would just naturally do. And um, even a block of code is, in fact, an object, just like a Python compiled code object. Cute little interesting thing, because it loves objects so much, 7 dot is actually a syntax error. <laughs> so floating point numbers have to be specified as 7.0 or 0 0.9, because integers, plain old plain, inter plain everyday run-of-the-mill plain, just number 5 kind of integers, have methods. <laughs> like 5 times. So does Python. <laughs> 5 dot times? Yeah, you can't use the dot there. But you oh, yeah, you could. Yeah, you'd, you, not, not, not built in, but you could bind, bind the times no, no, method. No, no, it's built in. Oh, is it? Yeah. No, okay. It's just Talk to me afterwards. You can't use dot because then it would look like a floating point. Ah, uh, yes, you can't you use the actual dot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you go paren 5 paren, yeah, <laughs> then you can go. But that's ugly. This is just like five dot times, <laughs> which is like a whole set of parens that you don't have to type, which is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and those, those sigils, those dollar signs that I, um, that I pointed out, you also get instead of self dot, it's at. <laughs> and you'll go, of course. <laughs> um, so you don't have to type self dot. At gives you ac access to the, um, an attribute of Ruby. And at at will give you the class shared variables, static variables within the, uh, within the class. Classes are open, so you can retype class space fix num. And do more. So monkey patching is it? In fact, I think it's a little clearer. That's a personal view. All of this is a personal view, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Uh, it's very easy to inherit and extend built-in classes. Um, Ruby. In, uh, going a little further. Ruby environment. Um, IRB, which is the interactive Ruby, has default command completion. So if I've got um, you know Ruby, I can. <laughs> Whoops, five dot, tab, tab, display 104 possibilities. Sure. <laughs> so there's all your methods of the number five. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, but it's default. Now, I know IPython has default command completion, but um, the standard yeah, Python interpreter four. doesn't. Ah, oh, I need 3.4. We all need 3.4. Um, so IRB is a bit of a cross between Python and IPython. Um, just for those that are interested in this, um, there is support for IPython no notebook, but NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, are, uh, there is some work to get some of that into Ruby. <laughs> this seems like a little thing, but I'm often jumping between Windows and Unix. Uh, lots of my clients run Windows, and I'm running Python, and I'll do a Control D. Oh, no, this doesn't work under Windows. You've got a Control Z. <laughs> IRB is Control D on every platform. Minus R debug is basically the same as PDB. RDoc is similar to PyDoc. Standard library. Um, this, uh, the standard import, there is no easy as. You learn to love Python's import as pretty quickly when you're using Ruby. Um, require takes a string, which is interesting. So it means that things like um, paths, absolute paths, relative paths, are actually quite obvious. So now I know Python has dot and dot dot and but you need to be quite careful about understanding where am I getting this module. Not that I'm promoting absolute paths, by the way, um, for files, because that's a really bad idea, but <laughs> I talked about dollar colon. Or, to be thankful, you can dollar load path to see your sys path. The standard library in Ruby is on par with Python's, as far as you know, coverage and stuff. Uh, Ruby naming conventions are consistent, and as I mentioned, Python is getting better at that. Other differences, we don't have decorators. Oh, I love decorators. 
Good, excellent. <laughs> yeah, applaud now. <laughs> um, Ruby has clearly borrowed a few things from Python. It reminds me, I forgot to put on my Ruby t-shirt. But anyway, um, there is a yield. Yay! We've got def, for item in iterable is all borrowed straight from Python. I don't know if this is really meaningful. <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, uh, this is a module counts of the, uh, from modulecounts.com of the total number of modules in CPAN, the Perl Comprehensive Perl Archive Network, um, PyPy, which uh, the other day was like 46,000, and Ruby Gems, so their modules are called Gems, and there's a standard installer for that, Gem. Now, I do discount numbers as they're just numbers, but there is quite a lot of modules available in Ruby. Maybe I'll just say it like that. Um, the community, ah, they have a conference as well, uh, RubyCon. And uh, l this year, in February, when I went, um, it was held at Lunar Park. So that was the view outside the, uh, the window. Got a bit distracted. <laughs> but because it's at Lunar Park, what can I say? You know, like Dodgems. <laughs> and Coney Island. And whereas here in Brisbane, no offence if you're from Brisbane, you've got uh, Fake Beach. And <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say things like that. It's warm here. I will definitely, I'll give you that. Um, interestingly, there's many more women in the Ruby community um, at the Ruby conference. There's uh, um, very many. And I don't think that's because Python community is doing anything wrong. I think that's actually, this is actually because of where lots of people coming into Ruby. So, for example, there's a group called Rails Girls. And I'm extremely heartened to hear about um, uh, Django Girls. And uh, that's an excellent move to get lots of beginners um, into, the, uh, into the community. Um, they have more presence in beginners. And in fact, in my experience, it looks like in Python, most Python people know other languages. We love Python because we had to do C before, <laughs> or we had to do Perl, or we were doing Bash. Most Ruby people, that's all they know. They just know Ruby. I'm like, wow, where do you get your inspiration, or where do you get your idea for something else? So um, having said that, they have a very strong presence with beginners and the RubyConf was at Lunar Park and most Ruby people only know Ruby. So what can we learn as Python programmers? What can we learn from Ruby? We need more racing cars. That's certainly true. Um, I don't quite have enough money to um, get a Bagani Zonda. Still saving. They've got a national park. We need to petition someone to get a Python national park. We need to be careful with constants not mutating the constants. We need to be careful with scope as Python programmers. Watch out for globals. Watch out for functions modifying or even accessing um, the main lines variables. Tight coupling is a bad idea, capital B, capital I. Be careful with in-place mutating methods like reverse and sort. Be careful with zero. <laughs> Watch out for functions that return an offset because the caller might consider that zero was false when in fact it's uh, yes, I did find. And consider carefully your naming conventions. So, credits thanks to Kaiser Chiefs for Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Buddy for help in editing that clip. Seek and module counts. Uh, Matt's for Ruby, Quedo for Python. Questions? Thank you. Thank